This video will cover the basics of the Woovebox and also act as a quick start guide. This video assumes that your Woovebox is on the latest firmware, which, as of the filming of this video, is version 2465. Before doing anything else, connect your Woovebox to a pair of headphones or speakers via the lineout on the right hand side. In this case, I'm plugging mine directly into my audio interface and listening through headphones. Now power your Woovebox on using this switch in the back. You may need to charge your Woovebox, which can be done by plugging in a USB Type-C cable to the port on the left hand side. It's also important to make sure that you do not touch either the right or play buttons while the Woovebox is booting up as they are recalibrated every time you turn on the device to ensure accuracy. If at any point you feel your right or play buttons are acting strangely, you can recalibrate them simply by turning the unit off and turning it back on. When powering on your Woovebox, you'll be greeted by song mode you'll see the top line of the display reading SG01. This stands for song number one. Your Woovebox can hold up to 16 songs at once. Think of songs as projects. They have their own patterns, instruments, and more. To switch songs, hold the play button and press buttons one through 16. For this demonstration, I'm going to switch to song 12. Note that you can only change songs like this while in song mode. If done within a track, you'll change the current pattern for that track. Now let's ensure that song number 12 is empty. For that, we'll open the context menu. This is done by holding the right button and then pressing the value knob. While still holding right, keep pressing the value knob and it will cycle through different options in the context menu. Press it until the screen reads INIT song. This stands for Initialize Song and will ensure that we get to start working from scratch. To select Initialize Song while still holding right, long press on the value knob. The screen reads OK. A quick side note, most sections of the Woovebox have their own context menu that can be accessed in the exact same manner that we just did, by holding right and clicking the value knob. This is where you'll find things like Initialize, Copy and Paste, Randomize, and even Export Stems. The options will change depending on where you are when you open the context menu. Now that we have a blank song, we need to use some tracks to make some patterns. Each song has 16 total tracks, and each of those tracks can have up to 16 patterns. Let's start with the kick drum. To switch from song mode to a track, simply hold the value knob, then select buttons 1 through 16 to access their corresponding track. To access tracks 14, 15, and 16, hold the value knob down and then long press on those corresponding buttons. If you short press on them, you'll access the sampler, live mode, or go back to song mode. Looking at track number 5, you can see it's labeled KI. That stands for kick, and by default, track 5 is the kick drum track. Although tracks 2 through 16 can actually be whatever you want them to be. Let's switch to the kick drum track now, again by holding the value button and pressing button number 5 to take us to the kick track. The display should now read 01KI, indicating that we're on pattern 1 of the kick track. The display will also read SEQ on the bottom half, indicating that we're on the sequencer page of the kick track. Tracks on the Woovebox are made up of different pages. On the sequencer page, the 16 grid buttons allow for live playing of the selected track in real time. Try it out! You may find that the volume is a little too low for your liking. You can adjust the master volume by holding the play button and turning the value knob until you get to a comfortable level. I prefer the high 80s, but I'm a drummer and my ears are shot. You'll also notice that the different pitches are quantized to a scale. In this case, C major slash A minor. This can be changed back in song mode on the global page, and can also be overwritten in the sequencer itself as well. However, for this video, we're just going to leave it to C major, A minor to keep things simple. Let's quickly take a look at all of the other pages available. Remember, all of these pages are the same across all of our tracks, so once you've learned one track, you've more or less learned them all. To scroll through the pages of a track, simply turn the value knob. The display will change depending on what page we're on. After SEQ is the Pattern page, abbreviated PTTN. Note that the 01KI on the top line doesn't change to let us know that we're still on Pattern 1 of the kick track. The Pattern page lets us do things like adjust the beat division, set pattern length, set up pattern chains, and more. We'll return to this page on a different track later. Turn the value knob again to get to the Global page, abbreviated GLOB. 
This is where global settings for the track live, such as track volume, per track swing, effect sends, and more. On pages, the options within that page are represented by lit up buttons on the grid. Simply hold down a button to view the option it represents. Let's hold down button number 12. The screen now reads DIST 0. This is how we adjust the distortion for the selected track. Again, in our case, this is the kick track. While still holding down button number 12, turn the value knob to the right to adjust the amount of distortion. Let's set it to 3. When we release the button, we'll hear a preview of our sound with the distortion added. On any of the tracks other than the sequencer, if you press a button, you'll only hear the track sound when you release the button, making the sound design process much more efficient. If you want your sound to play instantly when you press a button, simply head back to the sequencer page. Let's continue our tour of the available track pages. After global is OSC1, short for oscillator 1. Next is oscillator 2. Next is amplitude. Then filter. Then pitch. Then pan. Then dynamics. And finally, patch. Again, keep in mind that within all of these pages, each lit up grid button represents an option that can be adjusted, except this final page, which is the patch page. Here, any lit up buttons represent a preset that can be switched to by long pressing on that button. Feel free to try out some of these different sounds. If you want to go back to the patch that you started with, long press on button 16. For now, let's go back to the sequencer page and actually sequence something. Now we could use the value knob to scroll all the way back to the sequencer page. However, you can simply click it in once to instantly jump back to the sequencer page. Clicking it in again will take you back to whatever page you were on before. It remembers. This makes it very quick and easy to adjust your sound, pop back to the sequencer, punch something in, and then repeat. All right, before we sequence anything, we need to actually pick a note to sequence. I like the sound of this pitch right here. To select it, simply press it. Now, hold the right button. While on the sequencer page, holding the right button turns the grid into a 16-step sequencer. Let's put our kick drum down in a simple four on the floor pattern. Press buttons one, five, nine, and 13 to do just that and create a basic pattern. Press play to hear it. Press play again to stop. Let's add a snare now. To switch to the snare drum track, hold down the value knob and press button six, labeled SN. Make sure that you're on the sequencer page by looking for the SEQ. Then play some buttons to audition your sound. Ah, huh, I like this one here on button number nine. Let's sequence it. Remember, to sequence, simply hold right and then input your steps. In this case, I'm gonna go on number five and 13. Let's have a quick listen. Basic, but good. Let's throw some hi-hats in those off beats now. Hold the value knob and press button 7 to switch to the hi-hat track, labeled HH. Again, make sure you're on the sequencer page, and then find a pitch that you like. Ooh, I like this one. Let's hold down right to sequence it on our offbeats, those being steps 3, 7, 11, and 15, the ands. Let's hit play and have a listen. By the way, you can solo the track that you're currently on by holding value and pressing the corresponding track button. Think of it like switching to the track again. So we're on the hi-hat track, hold value, press the hi-hat track again, it says solo on. There we go, now we're soloed. You can repeat that to turn it off. Now it's time to add a bass line, but really quick before that, let's have a look at the chord track. To switch to the chord track, hold the value knob and select button number one, labeled CD. The chord track is unique for several reasons, the most important one being that it's truly four-note polyphonic. Again, make sure that you're on the sequencer page by ensuring the screen reads 01 CD sequencer for pattern one of the chord track on the sequencer page. On the chord track, the grid buttons are split into two different banks of chords. The first bank consists of buttons one through three and five through eight. 
and the second bank consists of buttons 9 through 11 and 13 through 16. Buttons 4 and 12 change the chord type for their respective banks. Have a look through all of the different extensions. There are a lot. You can easily pick and choose from any of these to go into your pattern. Mix and match, explore to your heart's content. But just not right now, as we're looking to keep things simple today. Before we actually sequence some of the chords, let's turn the value knob to the right to get to the pattern page. Hold down the very first grid button. This is the beat division option. It will determine how long one step represents in our current pattern. Ensure that this is set to four. There we go. You can use the value knob, of course, to change this, but we want it set to four. If you hit play and watch the playhead, you'll see that this track is moving a lot slower than the kick drum was. We actually have four measures to work with here instead of just one. Let's head back to the sequencer page. Now let's sequence a very basic chord progression, starting with a C major chord. I click the C major chord to select it. If this isn't a major chord, use button number four to cycle through until you see C, M, A. You can press N to bring up the label if you'd like. There you go. Now that we have a C major chord selected, hold right and place it on step one of the sequencer. Now let's add a minor chord. Let's use the second bank for the minor chords. Press button 12 until you see C.MI on the screen. There we go. Now I want to sequence a D minor. Since all of these chords down here are minor chords already, this one's C, this one should be D. There it is, D minor. Now hold right and put it on step five of our pattern. Next, let's grab an E minor, which should be right here. There we go. Hold right, put it on step number nine. Let's grab an F major now. Remember, our major chords are up here. There's F major. I select it, hold right. Let's put it on step number 13. And finally, let's put a G major on step 15. There's a G major, right, step 15. There we go. Press play to hear our pattern. Again, while this sounds like four measures of music, it's important to note that it's actually only using one pattern. Let's add a bass line. Switch to the bass track by holding the value knob and pressing button number two, labeled BS. On the sequencer page, press a few buttons to audition the sound. I think this needs a little distortion, so let's use the value knob to go over to the global page and hold down button number 12, which remember, that's where our distortion is. Using the value knob, Turn it to the right, just like we did for our kick drum. Let's set this to three again. That sounds good. However, before we leave the global page and go back to the sequencer, let's hold down button number four to access the follow chord option and talk about it. A bit. Follow chord is a feature that changes the notes of the selected track based on what the chord track is doing. This is an incredibly powerful feature that can allow you to make one pattern go quite far. While holding down button four on the global page, you can turn the value knob to see all of these different chord follow types. They're basically different algorithms that tell the selected track how to follow the chord track. Since this is the bass track, let's set it to root, which should be all the way to the right. This will make our bass follow the root note of the chord track. Click in the value knob to head back to the sequencer page. When you press the grid buttons to audition the sound, You'll notice that we're locked to one note and we're only able to change octaves. That's because follow chord is enabled. Let's sequence a basic rhythm in. I'm gonna select this octave right here on button number nine. Let's go ahead and hold right and sequence a note on step one, step four, step seven, step 11, step 13, and step 15. Now we're gonna press play and pay attention to the bass notes.
Notice how the bass notes change with the chord? Even though we only have one 16-step pattern going, this really feels like four measures of music. Let's finish up our pattern by adding a little arpeggio over the top. Hold the value knob and press button 4, labeled AR, to get to the ARP track. On the sequencer page, press some buttons to audition the sound. Ugh, I don't really like this one that much, so let's change patches. Using the value knob, scroll all the way to the last page, labeled Patch. This is, of course, where we can switch preset patches. All of these lit up buttons are patches, simply long press to switch. I happen to know I like this one on button number 7. Don't forget, pressing button number 16 will always switch you back to the patch you entered the page with. A handy just-in-case button. Now, I want to go back to the global page, which is all the way back towards the beginning. So, instead of scrolling all the way back, we can simply click in the value knob to get to the sequencer page, then scroll to the right to get to the global page, which is just past pattern. With a little practice and memorization, you'll be flying around the pages of your tracks in time. Here on the global page, I want to adjust the follow chord option. Remember, that's on button 4. So, holding down button 4, we can use the value knob to scroll through our different follow chord options. I want to pick CLS. A. This follow chord mode will snap our arpeggio notes to whatever note in the chord that they're closest to. Before we go back to the sequencer page, let's turn one to the left and stop at the pattern page. Here we're going to adjust the length of the arpeggio track's pattern. You'll find the PT.LN, or pattern length, option under button 2. By default, it's set to 16. Let's set it to 7. Each of the 16 tracks on the Woove box can have independent lengths. Since the ARP track is following the chord track though, and the chord track is set to 16 steps, the actual notes of our arpeggio will still change as if they were in a normal 16 step pattern, but the rhythm will come off as changing, due to it only being 7 steps long. Turn the knob once more to the left to return to the sequencer page. Let's sequence some random notes now. Remember, press the button to select the note, then hold right and place it into the sequencer. I will go slow here so you can follow me exactly if you'd like. Now press play. Again, it should be noted that this is all one pattern, and we're not even using half of our available tracks for that pattern. If you feel that the arpeggio track is a little quiet, you can actually go to the global page of the arpeggio track, and under button number one, you'll find the master volume setting for that track. Let's set it to 82, sure. Hear how the notes of our arpeggio still follow the chord track, even though the rhythm doesn't and the step length doesn't match up? Let's jam with it in live mode. To access live mode, hold down the value knob and press button 15. Just like in song mode, live mode can get fairly complex, but for now we'll just cover the extreme basics. While in live mode, hold down right, and now you can mute any of the lit up tracks just by pressing them. Remember, we're using the kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, chord, bass, and arp tracks here. You can mute tracks and reintroduce them to change the mood of your song, even going to something like just the hi-hat track and building it up from there. Live mode also allows you to play a track in real time using buttons 1 through 16. To switch what track you're playing live with the grid buttons in live mode, hold down the play button until the screen says select track. It takes a second, there you go. Now, switch to any of the tracks that you'd like using buttons 1 through 16. Let's control the lead track on button 3. Now we can easily improvise melodies live while still maintaining control over our muted tracks. If 
you're just after the basics, you can stop the video now, and I do thank you for watching. However, if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to show you how we can take something like our arpeggio track a little bit further. Let's switch back to the arpeggio track. There we go. Since it's only seven steps long and the rest of our tracks are 16, we could remove one note from it to instantly create a pattern that feels more evolving. However, we can also use the when and do conditions to push that even further. On the sequencer page of our ARP track, we can see our sequenced note. Long pressing on one of these notes will bring up the step parameters. Let's long press on step four. By clicking in the value knob, we can cycle through different options, all specific to the selected step. You can see velocity, length, shift, which is micro timing. Then we get to when. This is the selected steps given chance to play, although that can be changed as well. To adjust the values, just turn the value knob. If you scroll all the way to the end of this list, you'll find PR25, PR50, and PR75. The PR stands for probability, and the number represents a percentage. If we set it to PR50, step 4 of our arpeggio track only has a 50% chance to play. We won't touch on it here, but clicking on the value knob again when you're on the when page will take you to the do page, and there are a ton of parameters here to go through. There's over 100, and I highly suggest checking out woofbox.com to wrap your head around all of them. It should also be noted that multiple steps can be selected at once for editing. Long press on one of the steps you'd like to edit until it starts flashing. Then hold the right button, and now you can select any additional steps. All of the step menu options will now apply to all of the selected steps. Again, now with our probability for step number four set, go ahead and press the play button, and I'll say it once more, this is all just one pattern. Thank you very much for watching. Now go out and make some music.